Kirsten David, we spoke with more than a few Tesla owners, and by and large, they love their cars. So much so, a lot of them might not realize how much it's actually costing them. Electric cars are just way too expensive. If you want to buy a good family electric car, you'll have to spend at least 25,000 pounds on models like the BYD Dolphin or MG4. That's just crazy. But there is good news. EVs prices are going to nosedive. When will this happen? Will anyone be able to afford an EV? Let's find out. To begin, when will EVs become much more affordable? This is actually very soon. We know people have been saying it for years, and it hasn't quite happened yet. However, there are some good reasons why new electric cars will soon be more affordable. This new change is imminent. Let's give you a breakdown of why electric cars' prices are going to fall. Explained with six reasons. The first reason why electric cars will start to become more affordable is that there are more and more electric cars being built. It's simple. It's clear that demand for electric vehicles decreased a bit last year. The Prime Minister of Britain postponed a ban on ICE vehicles until 2030 because electric cars were too expensive up front, particularly for those facing financial difficulties. This likely made people reconsider buying EVs. However, car manufacturers continue to produce them at the same pace. Now here's the thing, why are car makers still making a lot of EVs despite doubts? Well, they have to. The government still has a zero emissions vehicle mandate, a ZEV mandate, which imposes targets on car makers all the way up to 2035. Our suburbs are becoming hotspots for electric and hybrid vehicles, overtaking the city as consumers look to save money at the Bowser. What it means is that at least 22% of every car maker's range must be purely electric. Now, otherwise, they get fined. In 2025, that raises to 28%. In 2026, 33% must be fully electric, all the way up to 80% in 2030 and 100% in 2035. That means there are more new electric cars coming into the market at a time when buyers are uncertain about making the switch from petrol or diesel. So if you're a car manufacturer and you're competing with so many other electric cars, what's the best way of making your car stand out? You make it cheaper. That is going to happen. But how are these car companies lowering prices despite weak demand? One way they're doing this is by changing their manufacturing processes. For example, companies like Tesla are reducing costs by altering how they produce their cars in large numbers. Elon Musk's company is leading the way with a new method called gigacasting. This technique involves producing big parts of a car's body by pouring molten metal into high-pressure molds. Other companies like Toyota are hurrying to use similar techniques. These methods help factories make cars that are lighter and less expensive. However, some worry that this new approach might make it tricky to replace car parts. Although Tesla's methods help cut costs, they might cause repair costs to go up. The trade-off is if you've got one big mega casting down the side of the car and somebody damages that, you've then got an issue with repair costs. When you put stuff into a car like what Tesla's putting in, where, you know, oh, you don't, you, you want to buy, uh, you, you don't like your car because the rear seats aren't heated? Done. Now, moving on to reason number two, why EVs are probably going to become more affordable to more people. There are more and more used electric cars than ever before. One of the easiest ways to drive a new EV is to lease it or finance it, especially if you run it as a company car because you get huge tax breaks. And every day, more and more of these cars that people have been leasing are coming to the end of their lease periods and flooding the market. This means there are more options and lower prices for buyers. But wait, there's more. Depreciation is on your side. People sometimes criticize EVs for their higher depreciation, but for used cars, this is actually a good thing because the prices fall so quickly, and that makes used cars more affordable. For example, the price of a used Porsche Taycan is less than 45 grand for a four-year-old car that cost about double when it was new. You can get a Jaguar I-Pace secondhand for 20,000 pounds, which is much lower than its original price of around 70 grand. Obviously, there are questions about how long the batteries will last. The thing is that a significant portion of the public lacks understanding regarding what to look for when buying a used electric car. Fortunately, many EVs are equipped with diagnostic tools that provide valuable information about the battery's condition. The battery is the most costly, necessary, and, most importantly, 
continuous component of an electric vehicle. Now, let's talk about reason number three in our list of why electric cars will definitely get cheaper. This is a simple one, Tesla. They're going to have a massive impact on the entire electric car market. So here's the thing. Last year, the cost of the Model Y was reduced by 8,000 pounds. Because Tesla has a big impact, many car sales will follow suit. Several competitors already followed suit by implementing similar strategies such as reducing their prices, enhancing financing options, or offering discounts. At present, the typical discount on a new EV exceeds 10% off the initial price, and certain car manufacturers may even offer better discounts than that. Moving on, let's talk about reason number four on our list of why EVs are going to become more affordable. Surprisingly, Tesla wasn't the top-selling electric car brand in the world last year. That title went to BYD, Build Your Dreams from China, because they sold a huge number of cars in China, and now they're expanding into Europe with a simple goal, to sell a lot of cars here too. And they have one significant advantage, lower costs. Thanks to lower battery production expenses in China, manufacturers like BYD, GWM, and even MG can offer lower prices compared to European brands while still turning a profit. Let's provide you with an example. In China, a BYD Dolphin is priced at about 13,000 pounds, showing how affordable they can make it. Yeah, well, I, I agree completely with what Phil just said. If you look at the Chinese EV products right now, they are very, very good. But in the UK, due to import tariffs and other taxes, it's around 25,000 pounds. However, that's still relatively inexpensive compared to competitors. This affordability is why MG makes up 4% of new car sales in the UK, 1% more than Tesla. Additionally, with brands like Iways, Geely, and NIO also entering the market, they might sound fictional, but they are real and producing very innovative vehicles. This competition will further drive down EV prices. Next, we have reason number five. Even without considering the impact of Chinese manufacturers, it's an undeniable reality that traditional European car makers will need to align the prices of their electric cars with those of petrol equivalents. Currently, you're paying around 35% more for an electric car compared to a similar petrol model. This discrepancy is mainly due to the higher costs of materials and development. Which materials are so expensive? That will be batteries. The production of batteries alone requires significant amounts of energy and costly raw materials. However, the good news is that battery production costs are decreasing, and we'll get into that shortly. Currently, with the EV market showing signs of stagnation, brands are confronted with a straightforward choice, either lower their prices or face extinction. Number six is still about batteries. EV batteries are becoming increasingly affordable. According to Bloomberg, the prices of EV batteries dropped by 89% between 2010 and 2020, although it might not always seem evident. There are several reasons behind this trend. Firstly, economies of scale play a significant role. The more batteries are produced, the cheaper they become. Tesla battery manufacturer CATL. They supply more batteries to Tesla than any other company. They've just revealed a battery pack, it's a lithium ion phosphate battery that they say that they will warranty for 1.5 million kilometers. Secondly, manufacturers are localizing the extraction and processing of raw materials to reduce costs and carbon emissions. Thirdly, car companies are establishing their own gigafactories to manufacture batteries alongside the vehicles themselves. For instance, Nissan is investing billions of pounds in building such facilities in Sunderland, UK. Additionally, car manufacturers are improving their ability to repair and repurpose existing batteries over time. Tesla claims that 100% of their batteries are recycled, with none ending up in landfills. These efforts are not only beneficial for the environment, but also make EVs more cost-effective for consumers. It's a win-win situation. Not only that, but another crucial point of this topic is the continuous introduction of new battery types to the market. While all EV batteries will incorporate some form of lithium-ion technology, there is a wide array of other materials that can be used in batteries, particularly if the goal is to reduce costs. Typically, nickel and cobalt are used alongside lithium, but there's another type called LFP, which stands for lithium ferrous phosphate. These batteries have a slightly shorter range but are cheaper to manufacture. 
This is the type of battery that Tesla employs in the most affordable version of the Model Y, resulting in significant cost savings of 8,000 pounds. That said, even when batteries get cheaper, they're still expensive. The batteries that make an electric car possible are nothing like the AutoZone battery under the hood of an average gasoline-powered car. Automakers are also constantly trying to improve these batteries, requiring continuous investment. There are tons of ways to improve an EV battery. The hot-button issue for an electric car is range, how far the car can travel on a charge. But car buyers also want batteries that charge faster, can deliver more juice to improve the car's acceleration, and are incorporated into the car in a way that doesn't infringe on passenger space or cargo capacity. All these requirements have made battery prices to be expensive. There you have it, the six reasons we think electric cars are going to get cheaper soon. For a long time, experts have been saying that electric cars will eventually cost the same as traditional ones. But we're not quite there yet. Hopefully, we'll reach that point sooner rather than later. Realistically, though, if people want to buy electric cars without having to spend a fortune, it's something that needs to happen, isn't it? What do you think? Will electric cars become very affordable soon? We'll love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. See you in the next video.